candy. Dancing in the heads of children and adults alike, sweet treats can compete with the finest art and dining or be made humbly at home, or if you're feeling industrious, both. Let's talk candy making. Now, candy has such a broad scope of recipes because it includes everything from caramels to chocolates to gummies to hard candies to marshmallows. It can come in any shape, making a natural fit for artistic shapes and sculptures. This video isn't about recipes or advanced techniques, though those will be in the description. Like all our videos, this is just meant to give a taste of a new activity so you can decide if you really want to go down the rabbit hole and exactly how. For this video, I'm going to horrifically oversimplify things into three categories, syrup-based, chocolate-based, and squishy-based. Let's start with syrup-based, which are made using, you guessed it, sugar syrup, which is just sugar dissolved in water over heat. The heat is the tricky part. The hotter the water, the more sugar it can dissolve. At the same time, the more concentrated the syrup is, the higher the boiling point becomes, because science. This means that if we keep the syrup at a boil and keep track of its temperature, we will know about how concentrated it is, and the concentration determines how the syrup will behave once it's cooled down to room temperature. So by heating the syrup up to the right temperature, we can be relatively sure it's going to do what we want it to in the recipe. Don't have a thermometer to check what temperature it's at? That's okay. Most chefs throughout history didn't either until fairly recently. What they did was drop a small spoonful of syrup into cold water. After letting it cool, they tried to shape it and see what it did. At low temperatures, it would form very thin threads as it drips from the spoon. At higher temps, it would be formed into a ball. At even higher temps, it will form firm threads and even start to crack under pressure. After that point, it begins to turn golden brown and smell like caramel, because that's exactly what it is, and exactly why they call it caramelization. If you know either the temperature or cold water stage you need to achieve, then the rest is just a matter of following the recipe. With this method, you can make candied fruits, marshmallows, nougat, taffy, lollipops, caramel syrup, and pralines. Next we have chocolate-based candies. Chocolate may seem as easy as melting it and putting stuff in it before it cools down, but if you've done that, or ever left a candy bar in a hot car, you'll see that unless you do a process called tempering, it will cool down into a squishy, sticky, matte-colored mess. If you want a shiny, snappy chocolate, you need to use good technique. Or you can just buy candy melts from the store, which, no shame in that. Before you melt the chocolate, chop it up into small, even pieces if it isn't already. Then you can either use the microwave or double boiler, which is essentially a metal bowl that sits tightly over a boiling pot of water. Instructions for both are down below, but the microwave method involves putting three quarters of the chocolate in a microwave safe bowl that won't get too hot after multiple minutes of microwaving. Heat on low power for 30 seconds at a time, stirring in between. Pull it when the chocolate is mostly, but not all, melted. Stir until smooth, shiny, and completely melted. Check the temperature of the chocolate at this point. If it's below 122 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 degrees Celsius for dark chocolate, or 150 degrees Fahrenheit, 40 degrees Celsius for milk or white chocolate, continue to heat it in short spurts in the microwave, keeping an eye not to let it go much higher. Next, add the rest of the unmelted chocolate and stir gently until melted. Next, cool the chocolate to 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 degrees Celsius, stirring as you allow it to cool. This might take a while. Once it reaches that temp, dip a metal spoon into the chocolate and let it cool while stirring and keeping the chocolate warm, either by putting it over warm water around 90 to 95 degrees or a heating pad on low. If the chocolate on the spoon gets shiny and without streaks, then it's time to pour it over or into whatever you want. That's tempering, and while it can be a process, it's hard to argue with how pretty the results are and how great the resulting texture is. This is the chocolate you know and love. The last category involves using gelatin or something similar to make a squishy, gummy candy. If you're looking for a vegan substitution and don't mind a bit of extra firmness, you can use equal amounts of agar agar powder from the health food or international aisle of the grocery store, remembering that one package of gelatin is typically 2.5 teaspoons or 7 grams. You can find more substitutions in the description. Now let's talk about what you need for candy making. This craft suffers from the running shoe problem. All you need to run is shoes, but you come home with $200 worth of clothes and toys to do it. Avoid the running shoe problem by starting with simple recipes with simple tools to see if you like it, especially given how precise the task can be. All you need to make candied fruit is sugar, water, and citrus peel. Truffles need chocolate, cream, and cocoa powder. Chocolate bark needs chocolate and nuts. Kohakuto, a type of Japanese gummy rock candy, just needs water, sugar, and agar agar. These recipes use a microwave, stove, refrigerator, saucepan, spoon, baking dish, and cookie sheet. You don't even need a thermometer because there are instructions for going without it below. You can always start there. 
But let's say you do like it and you have some money to spend. There's thermometers, high-grade ingredients, endless flavorings and extracts, double boilers, molds, lollipop sticks, candy spinning machines, airbrushes, and that's not to mention getting silly with luster dust or gold leaf. There's a reason pastry chefs work in the finest of restaurants. And if you really want to go all in, you could always go to school for that. And that's because a lot of candy making is actually science. So if that strikes your fancy, you may find yourself very at home in this hobby. As always, there are links in the description for more information, but I want to especially thank Elizabeth Labau from The Spruce Eats for their incredible articles on the subject. Thank you all for listening, and as always, I'll see you for my next hyperfixation.